Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today, I'm going to show you my little treasure box. It's a lot of broken jewelry, leftover pieces from things I've had and collected over the years. I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. And that's our project today. We're making perfume bottles and toiletry items for the Roaming House dollhouse. So just follow along with me. Let me show you what I do. Now, here are some perfume bottles that I made a while back. Although I like some of them, some of them are a little out of scale. And I have some new ideas that I want to use today. So I'm going to repurpose those. Now, here's one that I really liked. Um, I added several different um, bead caps and spacer beads to it to give it a lot of detail and variation. I like it a lot. I actually need to put something on the bottom to make it stand, though. And here's another one. Uh, the glue I used wasn't very good, so it got on the outside, so it needs to be cleaned up. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to repurpose these because some of the beads I liked, but they need a little help. So, dolls, I guess this is another video that falls into the category of trash to treasure. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So, I just wanted to show you this really quick. This was something I got in a bundle, and although I thought it was cute, I didn't like it that the bottles didn't have much variation. No, I just wanted to show you really quick that we've also got some polymer clay bars of soap, and I'm going to show you how to make those really quick really simple till they go along with the perfume because you have to take a bath before you put on perfume <laughs> and while i was working at it i made the soaps i realized that i actually could make what looked like jars and bottles out of the polymer clay so i actually took some of the clay in some of the same colors and just kind of reshaped it to create again what looks like bottles and these are just rolled pieces that I cut the ends off um, actually created some little labels and just put lids on them and they need to be repurposed and upgraded but yeah I can show you how to make those two today dolls so let's go ahead and have some fun so as I mentioned that this is a trash to treasure type concept uh, these are just teeny beads and little cogs and you see that's actually a random earring but the way I used it with my perfume bottles I stuck it in to be like a dauber and just have a little small um, bead separator at the bottom as the base and yeah you got a really cute perfume bottle. So dolls, I'm showing you examples of what you can do. Your beads and bottles won't be exactly like mine, so you're going to come up with different things with your imagination and what you have available. But I'm just showing you for scale and for size and the shapes that you want to look out for. Square beads, flat beads, small, really teeny beads, little pearls um, with iridescent or metallic looking colors on them. So look for beads and things in colors and shapes that you like that appeal to you because at the end of the day, you have to like what you make. Now, I definitely use the Gorilla Gel Super Glue for projects like this for gluing metal and glass. They It definitely works really, really good. It catches fast and the bond is really great. So you're going to have to take your time, dolls, and use a steady hand, definitely Use some tweezers because you don't want to get your hand in that super glue. So you see, dolls, I'm just choosing two beads, a bigger one for the base of the bottle and a smaller, more teeny type one for the top of the bottle. Adding my glue and look at that. That looks like a tiny bottle of perfume. See that? Isn't that lovely? Really simple project and you can make such beautiful things. Just allow yourself to play. Allow yourself to imagine. I didn't have a plan, dolls, because remember, I was working with broken leftover pieces from old perfume bottles that I had made. So collect your beads, take some time, get you something warm to drink, and just allow yourself to play. Because a little time and some imagination, you can come up some, with some really lovely things. I always love projects like this because I really don't know what I'm going to make until I've made it. I just allow myself to have fun and to play. 
and I just believe you have to play when you're making miniatures. So I had a couple beads from the old collection that I really liked a lot. They were like a purple color. They were from some old earrings I had. One I'd already put a top on it that I really liked. But I was looking for a bead for the second one that was a little different, again, to add variation. I did have a spacer bead already glued to the top, and I found one in a similar color, sort of a mauve shade, and I glued it to the top. So it's the same bead, but they look totally different because of the top. So that's what I mean when I say use your imagination. You don't have to make a whole lot of the same thing. You just try something different. Now this was an old one from my original collection. It's actually out of scale, but I like it, so I'm going to keep it. I can put it in the back of the cabinet. Now this was another smaller one that I liked as well, but the top is a little faded, so I'll just put a little rub and buff on that. Now here was a bead again from the old collection that was broken, and I looked for a bead that would complement it, and I found a black one. It was a little bit bigger, so I really didn't need to use my tweezers. It was long enough that I could place it without putting my fingers in the glue. And so I just took my time and I placed it. I really feel like this one came out really, really pretty. Look at that. Look at that dog. And although you do see some of the glue um, from the original design on that, to me it just makes it look like an old perfume bottle. Vintage. Now, this was one of my original designs. Um, it's a little different. The top is really big, but I really love that metallic bead. So I'm going to keep it. I'll sit it in the back of the cabinet. Because sometimes you need pieces that are fillers. Now, this was a, a bottle that I made from polymer clay. And I like the shape of it. I made it kind of a soft square shape. And then put a black bead on the top. And I did use the tweezers this time, dolls, because it was really small. And I like that. Now, you could put a label on that or anything. So I do want to take a moment. I'm going to just kind of stop here and show you how to make these bars of soap and the clay um, bottles. And you can give them any variation you want. So I'm going to just show you this with um, the white clay. And then I took a cream piece of clay and some purple clay and mixed it together. I always think of vintage soaps of some shade of pink or mauve. <laughs> so after I was done kneading it into the shade, I began to shape it. And I rolled it into a small ball. And after I got it into a little ball or a little bead, I smashed it. I just smashed it down. Because I used to see little small um, vintage decorative soaps. They would always be uh, a round shape. And I thought that was cute. Now you can flatten it, you can detail it, you could stamp it, dolls. You could make it as intricate or as detailed as you like. I'm just giving you the basics of what I did. Now for the white bars of soap, I just used some white polymer clay. I took a new packet in this instance and just cut the end off of it. And it was kind of in a rectangular shape, which was perfect for square bars of soap. And I guess it weren't be square, they're more rectangular shaped. But after I cut the piece that I wanted, if you didn't have a new bar, you can just roll it out. And when you get your uh, flattened clay to your desired thickness, literally, I just cut the, the rounded ends off and split it down the middle. Now, if you shape it really, really perfectly even, you won't have to do a lot of sanding afterward. But because I did just more or less of a rough cut dials, um, my shapes are roughly in the size of the re rectangle. I usually sand my bars afterward to give them the refinement that I want them to have. But this is just a simple way. I took a piece of acetate to lift it. Now, if you had made it on top of your tile or the item you're going to bake on, you wouldn't have had to do that. But but before we bake the bars, let me show you really quick how to make these clay bottles or toiletry containers. So you can make them in any color you like to create whatever variation in your collection you like. But I just take a small piece of clay, roll it out in a chunky type snake, cut the ends out or cut the ends down. <laughs> and after I cut them down to the desired height, 
I just pat it a little bit. Now you don't have to make it perfect because again, you can sand it to refine it more. I just want to give you the general idea of how to create the shape. You bake this along with your bars of soap. When you're done, you can sand it on the bottom and top to flatten it, add your bead, add any kind of design, and there you go. So let's get back to the bead. So going back to our original bottles, this is another one that I made previously. Again, it's a little out of scale, but because I really like it, it's actually a stud earring glued into a big bead. Now I did have this little amber bead that I really liked and it had another one of those little spacer beads glued to the top. And let me show you what I mean when I say spacer beads. They almost look like a gears. Spacer beads are really nice for adding detail to your perfume bottles. Now dolls always, always, always keep scale in your mind when you're making your perfume bottles think about what shelves they'll go on if they're bigger like the bigger ones that i'm keeping those are going to have to go outside on a table they won't be able to go in my cabinets because they're too large now this was a little blue bead that i had left over from my old collection and i really liked it so i found another top to put on it and actually just a more of a bronze colored bead i thought it was really cute now that'll definitely be, be small enough to go inside cabinets or on top of a dressing table because it's the perfect scale. Now lastly, I had this little blue bead. It's kind of a common bead, but it looked not so common when I put a metallic bead on top of it. So just so you dolls know, some beads have a struggle standing up. So I don't want you to worry about that. Keep you some tacky wax or some museum wax on hand to make them stand up. So I'm just giving you a close-up look of what we did today. There's the amber um, bead, the green one, the two little purple square ones with the different top, even that old one um, that's out of scale that I decided to keep. And then here are the smaller ones, um, some examples of what you can make with the clay ones. And I was use those little spacer beads between the tops. So just giving you a close-up view so you can imagine what you can make and create. Dolls, don't be afraid to use old earrings, old beads. You see there, I've got one that's got a wooden bead on it. Wooden beads work really great as well. You can leave them wooden or you can paint them. Your options are only limited to your imagination. These items are what I call the little things dolls that make your collection look full and complete. You don't want your dollhouse to look sparse or uninhabited. You want it to look like people live there and that real life is going on. It makes it look as though each bottle was a choice. Each one was an individual selection, not as though it was a sale of all the same thing. I hope you dolls also take the time to make those little baby soaps. They really are add a lot of realism as well. And although we use this little cute piece as our inspiration today, I like the variation of what I created. Different shapes, sizes, colors, materials. I believe the realism is in the differences, not a sea of same. And you can create a lovely dressing table like this and maybe even decide to use a locket as a powder compact or even take some tiny springs and turn them into rollers. If you enjoyed this video today, dolls, definitely let me know in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe, and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And also, a special thank you to my subscribers and even those who haven't subscribed but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. I sure have enjoyed you, dolls, today. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.